In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create a lobby screen, load player data such as profile pictures and names, and how to add and remove these properly when someone connects or disconnects. The source code with comments is available on my Patreon, link down below, and if you missed the previous video, feel free to watch it if you want to. By the way, this video will have a lot of content, meaning I can't explain everything in detail. Okay, so to make this tutorial easier, I will split it into different parts. Stage 1 will be setting up our scenes and everything with our UI. So I've gone ahead and named the main scene to main menu. I've also created an extra scene called lobby. Inside of here I have a canvas object where I have a text field. Inside the canvas I have a text field called lobby name text and this will hold the name of our lobby. I also have a scroll view where I have gone ahead and removed the vertical scroll bar. On the scroll view itself, these are the settings that I have. And inside of the viewport, I have a content, which I have a content size filter applied to, and I've set the vertical fit to preferred size. And this is a vertical layout group that I also added with these settings. Feel free to mess around with these to make them look and feel however you want. But essentially, the scroll view will hold our different player plates that will have our profile pictures as well as our names. The last thing we need to do is go back into the main menu and actually go to our network manager. Inside of here, we're going to go to Steam Lobby. And inside of the script, we are going to remove these two game objects, the host button and the lobby name text, since we are now using a different scene for this. You will also get some errors since we just removed them, so remove the host button set false and all of this text part as well. I would have almost forgotten, another thing we need to do is make a public static Steam Lobby and call this instance. This is so we can reference this Steam Lobby script whenever we want. And in the start function, we want to set its instance. So to do this, we can do an if statement check if instance equals null, and if that is the case, we will just make instance equal this. So I'm now back into the lobby, and stage two will be creating all the scripts and the prefabs. So we won't be actually writing the scripts just yet, but we will create them so that we don't get any errors later on. So on your hierarchy, right click and create empty, and we're going to call this empty. Inside of here, I'm going to add a component, and this will be a network identity. I'm then going to drag this into a prefabs folder and remove the one on the scene. We are once again going to create an empty game object, and this will be called our player object. On this player object, we also want to add a network identity, but we will also add a new script called player object controller. And once again, we will drag it into the prefabs folder and remove it from the hierarchy. The final object we want to create will actually be inside of the canvas in the scroll view under viewport into content. So right click content and select create empty and we will call this player list item. So instead of the player list item, I added three different objects. The first one being an image, which is just the background. I also added a text object called player name text. This will hold the name of our player. And finally, the player icon, which is a raw image. Now ensure this is a raw image and not a normal one, otherwise it won't work. And on this object, we are also going to add a script. This one is going to be called player list item. I will then close this and also drag it into the prefabs and finally remove it. The final thing we need to do is create another empty game object and call this lobby controller. On here, I am going to add a new script called lobby controller, and this object can stay in the scene. So with that, you should have four different objects and three different scripts, meaning we can move on to stage three. Okay, so stage three, we will be writing the script, and since there is a lot to do, I will be jumping from one script to another to make it easier to understand, and also so that we don't get any errors while coding this, so you guys don't get confused. So we will start with our custom network manager script. We made this in the last tutorial and we haven't written anything in it, so now it's time. I'm first of all going to reference our game player, which will be created for every connection that is made. So to do this, we will make a private player object controller, call it game player prefab. And because this is a private field, we can't actually assign it in the inspector. So to be able to do so, we can make it a serialized field. I will then make a list of all the players that have connected. To do this, we'll make a public list and then player object controller. We'll call this game players, and then we're going to do some curly brackets, write get semicolon, and we're going to make this equal a new list player object controller. The reason we have get is so that we can get information about every player. Okay, so we're going to only add one function in here, and it's going to be an override function. So type in public override void on server add player. Now we can remove the base script because we'll be making our own. Now this function will be called every time a player gets added to the server. So first of all, let's check if we're in the right scene, because we only want our player to be created once we're in the lobby and not in the main menu. So at the top, let's add a new using method, unityengine.sceneManagement. We will then check what scene we are in, which we can do with sceneManager.getActiveScene, and then check the name, and if it's equal to lobby, which is what we named the scene. And inside of here, we want to instantiate our object. So let's make a reference to it by doing player object controller, and we'll call this game player instance. And we're going to make it equal instantiate 
and then our game player prefab. The reason I'm making a reference to it is because we want to edit some data in it. And before we continue the script, we actually need to add some data to this game player controller script. So inside of the player object controller script, we are going to add two new using methods, one being using mirror, and the other one being using Steamworks. I'm going to change mono behavior to network behavior, and we're making it a network behavior because we want it to sync across the server. So we can remove both of these methods and we will create some variables. So all of these variables will be sync variables. This is because we want them to sync across the network. So what we can do is make some brackets and type in sync var. And the first one will be a public integer called connection ID. The second sync variable will also be a public integer called player ID number. The third will also be a sync var. This one will be a public u long. And this will be our player steam ID. And the final one will also be a sync variable, but this time with a hook. This means that whenever this variable changes, a function will be called. So to do this, we write sync var, then we do brackets and we write hook, and we make it equal name of another set of brackets, and instead of here, the function that we want it to call. So for this, I will do player name update. And then outside of this, we just do a public string called player name. So you'll be getting an error right now, and this is because this function hasn't been created. So let's quickly make it. So do public void player name update. Inside of which we want to make a string called old value and another string called a new value. So we will pass in our old value and then return this new. Okay, so for now I'm going to leave this function as it is and we will return to it later. But let's go back to the top and do one more thing. Let's set a reference to our private custom network manager and I'm going to call this manager. And I'm going to make a function that allows us to assign the manager because currently as it's private, we won't be able to assign it in the inspector. So what we can do is make a private custom network manager and also call a manager just with a capital, do some brackets. And inside of this, I'm going to make a get function and check if our manager is not null. And if that is the case, we'll just return because we've already got it assigned and make sure to return the manager. And if we haven't got it assigned, we will do another return. This time we'll do manager equals custom network manager dot singleton as custom network manager. And that is it for now. We'll go back to the script in a second. Let's go back to our network manager. And inside of here, we can actually assign the data. So let's do game player instance connection ID dot connection ID and we will set this to con which is the connection that we're passing through dot connection ID we also want to set the player number so let's do game player instance dot player ID number and make this equal game players dot count and we're going to add one because this starts at zero and finally we want to set our steam ID so let's do game player instance dot steam ID and we are going to make this equal a u long because this variable is a u long and then we want to write steam matchmaking so for this go to the top and make sure we're using steamworks Steam matchmaking dot get lobby member by index. So inside of here, we need to reference our so inside of here, we need to reference our Steam ID lobby. So to do this, we can do some brackets, then see Steam ID. Then we can do Steam lobby dot instance dot current lobby ID. And afterwards, we need the count of the player we want to access. So in this case, we do game players dot count. This is the line of code. It's a little bit long, but hopefully you understand. And the final thing we want to do is add the player for every single client connected. So we can do network server dot add player for connection. Then we will pass in the connection, so com. And finally, the game player instance dot game object. And that is our entire custom network manager finished. And we will never have to go back to this for this particular tutorial. The next script I'm going to make is the player list item script, as this script doesn't actually depend on anything else. So we can remove both of these functions functions, make sure we are using unityengine.ui and also using Steamworks. First of all, we have a player name, so let's do public string player name. We also have a public integer called connection ID, a public ulong called player steam ID, and we also want to make a boolean to check whether we've received our steam avatar. To do this, let's make a private boolean called avatar received. After this, we want to make reference to the player text and the icon. So let's make a public text object called player name text and also a public raw image called player icon. So to receive our actual player image, we need to do this via a callback. So let's make a protected callback and this is avatar image loaded. And I'm just going to call this image loaded. Then we want to make a start function where we want to actually create this callback. So let's do image loaded and make this equal a callback avatar image loaded dot create and then the name of the function. So I'm going to do on image loaded. This function currently doesn't exist, so let's actually create it. So let's make a private void on image loaded. Instead of this, we want to pass the avatar image loaded callback. I'm going to call this callback. And in here, we are going to check if our current callback dot steam ID. And then once again, we're going to do steam ID. This is because this one is a C steam ID and this one is a U long. And we are going to check this against our U long, so player steam ID. So if this is us, 
we will set our avatar. So let's do player icon dot texture equals get steam image as texture. And in the brackets, I'm going to write callback dot m i image. And if this isn't us, we will just simply return. You'll be getting an error on this right now because this function doesn't exist. So let's create it. Okay, so this is the function you want to create. So either copy it from here or go into the description and copy it. The reason I'm not going through it one by one is because someone else made this and this basically will grab our image from Steam and change it to a texture. Finally, we need two more functions. One's going to be called get player icon. And in here, I'm going to make an integer called image ID. And I'm going to set this to Steam friends dot get large friend avatar. And then another set of brackets and write C Steam ID, where I will grab the player Steam ID. And this will grab our friends icon. So not only are we loading our own, but we'll also load the other players. But we need to check if this is successful. So let's check if image ID equals equals minus one, meaning there was an error. We just want to return. And the final function we want to do is a public void called set player values. And in here we'll start by setting our player name text dot text to equal our player name. And also we would check if we haven't actually received our avatar. So if avatar hasn't been received, we want to call get player icon. And this script is now finished. So now we we will be editing our lobby controller script and this is going to have a lot of things in it. The stuff we are going to making isn't necessarily confusing, there's just going to be a lot of it so try to keep up. We'll start at the top by making some using methods, so let's make sure we are using mirror. Let's also make sure we are using steamworks. Let's also make sure we are using unity engine.ui and finally we are wanting to use system.link. So I'm going to remove these two functions so it's easy to see. We will start by making our variables. So first of all, we want to make this an instance just like we did with the Steam Lobby. So do public static lobby controller called instance. We then want to do our UI elements. So let's make a public text called lobby name text. And then we want to do the rest of the player data. So let's make a public game object called player list view content. And this is where we will be creating our objects in. And we also want to make another public game object, this time called the player list item prefab. And the final game object we're going to create is our local player object. So this is the object that is local to us. The other data we are going to make is a public ulon called current lobby ID, a public boolean called player item created, which by default we will set to false. We want to create a list of our player list item and I'm just going to call this player list items and I'm going to make a new equal a new list player list item like so. And two more things we're going to make is a public player object controller called local player controller. And this is basically going to access the script of our local player. And now we want to do the network manager. So let's make a private custom network manager called manager. And just like we did in the player object controller, we can copy this get function and just paste it in. Now, since we made an instance of this, we also want to make it in awake. So let's make a void awake, inside of which I'm going to check if our instance is equal to null. And if it is, we want to set the instance to equal this. We are now going to be making seven functions to do different things. First of all, we make a function to update the lobby name. So let's make a public update lobby name. Inside of here, we need to set our current ID lobby to equal our manager dot get component steam lobby and then current lobby ID. And finally, we want to set the lobby name text. So let's do lobby name text dot text and make it equal steam matchmaking dot get lobby data, then our current lobby ID, but we need to convert it to a C steam ID. So we do new C steam ID and then current lobby ID. And finally, we want to grab the name variable. So this function is finished. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is going to handle updating our list of players. So let's make a public void update player list. And instead of here, we're going to have four if statements because we're going to call different functions depending on what is currently happening. If we have not yet created our um, player, so we can reference the player item created boolean. If we haven't done that, we want to call a function called create host player item. And this function doesn't exist yet. So let's quickly just make these functions so that we don't get any errors. So a public void create player item. We will also want to make a public void create client player item. We will also need a public void update player item and a public void remove player item. So now in the update player list, we are going to check if a client connects. And if that is the case, we want to update the screen with their icon and stuff. So let's do if player list items dot count is smaller than a manager dot game players dot count. Then we want to call create client player item. Next if statement is going to check if we have too many items. And if that is the case, we want to remove it. 
So this will basically occur when someone leaves the lobby or disconnects. So let's do if player list items dot count is bigger than we can then just copy this manager dot gameplayers dot count. Then we want to call remove player item. And finally, we want to check if it is exact. So if you have the right amount of people in the lobby, we want to update it because if someone changes the name or profile picture, we want that to be updated. So let's do if player list items dot count equals equals and then we could put manager dot game players dot count then we will call update player item later on in a future video in this function i will also be making a ready up system meaning that we can constantly update if someone is ready or not okay so this function is finished now before we make these four functions let's make a new one so we can find our local game player so let's make a public void find local player instead of which i'm going to make our local gameplay object equal game object dot find and the name of our object, which will be local game player, as we will change that in a second, and I'll show you what I mean by that. And then we want to also assign our script. So let's do game local game player controller equals local player object dot get component, and then our player controller. So now let's do these four functions, and all of these are going to be slightly long, so try to keep up. So in our host item, we want to have a for each loop because we want this to happen for every client that's connected. We'll do player object controller. We'll call it player. And we'll check this in our managers dot game players. So for every player, we want to do game object. We want to make a reference to the game object. Call it new player item and make it equal instantiate and then the player list prefab. And we want to make sure that this is as a game object. Next up, we also want to make a reference to the script. So let's make a player list item script reference and do new player item script and we'll make this equal our new player item dot get component player list item now we want to set the data of that items so let's grab the script and we'll start by setting our player name which is going to equal player dot player name we also want to set our connection id which is going to equal player dot connection id dot connection id and we also want to set our player steam id which is going to equal player dot player steam id finally we are going to call the function within the script which is called set player values so let's do this dot set player values and now we need to ensure that this object gets created inside of the content in the scroll view so we can reference the game object itself and do transform dot set parent and set it to the player list content dot transform and finally let's make sure that the scale of this is correct so do new player item dot transform dot local scale equals vector free dot one and now we just want to add it to the list so we've got this list here and we want to make sure that we keep track of how many we've created so let's do player list items dot add and then this so new player list item script and since we've already created a player we can set our player item created to true so i know this can look a little bit confusing but this is what we're going to do if you are the host if you are the client we are going to do essentially the same thing but slightly different so what we can do is we can actually copy this for each loop but inside of here we need to do an if statement so we need to check if the player list items dot any and this is going to be a little bit confusing but we're going to do b equals or larger than b dot connection id if it equals our player dot connection id so essentially what we are checking here is we are checking if we are already in the list and if we're not this is when we want to call it because if we are in the list we don't want to add ourselves twice and all i'm going to do is literally just copy all of this script from inside of here paste it in and this script is now finished for the update we are once again going to copy the for each loop and right now this is going to be fairly empty but later on we'll be adding other things here to update like whether you're ready and what character you've got selected so we want to add another for each loop inside of here but we're going to do player list item and i'm just going to call this player list item script in player list item in player list items and inside of here i am going to make an if statement to check if our player list item script dot connection id is equal to our current connection id and if it is the case this is what we're going to call if it's us so the reason we're doing this if statement is to check that this is us pressing it and it's not someone else so what we can do is we can grab the script we can set our player name to equal player dot player name and then we can also go ahead and call the function called set player values this is finished and now we have one more function left to go and this one also is going to be slightly long so we want to make a new list so let's do list and then player list item and we're going to call this player list items to remove and we are going to make a new equal a new list player list item so essentially we're making, new, we're making a new list so we know how many players we need to remove. Then we will make another for each loop where we will reference our player list item, call this player list item in player list items. And here is where we'll be doing the removal. So first of all, let's make sure that our current manager dot game players dot any actually has us in it. So once again, we're going to do B equals or larger than B dot connection ID is equal to player list item dot connection ID. So once again, we only want to remove ourselves 
if we are actually originally in the list. So this is just a precautionary thing. But here all we need to do is player list item to remove dot add player list item. So we want to add ourselves to this list. And now we're actually going to remove ourselves. So let's check if player list items to remove is actually bigger than zero because if we don't have any players in here, we don't want to call this. And we will make a for each loop, so this gets removed for every single player who's currently connected. So let's do player list item, and we'll call this player list item to remove in player list items to remove. Make sure the spelling of this one is slightly different, or you have certain things capitalized, and here you don't. We'll first of all make a reference to the game object of this. So we'll call this object to remove. And then we want to just copy this name into here and dot game object since we're referring to the script. And then we'll reference the original list. So player list items dot remove and then the name of it. So object to remove. We then want to destroy this object. So let's do destroy object to remove. And finally we reference the player list item to remove to equal null. Sorry, I made a mistake. This actually doesn't need to be object to remove. Instead, it needs to be this at the top. And finally, we can just do object to remove and make it equal null. And this function is also finished. So this function was a little bit more complicated, but essentially what we're doing is we are making a new list of players we need to remove and then removing that player for every single connected client. Now that that was finished, the final thing we're going to do is edit our player object controller. Inside of here, I'm going to make some new functions. Let's make a public override void on start authority. And we will remove the base for a second. We also want to make a public override void on start client and also remove the base public override void on stop client and also remove the base and the final thing we want to do is make a command so let's do this command and this will be a private void command set player name and instead of here we want to make a string and call this player name okay so let's actually start coding them so in the authority we actually want to call this command so we can set the player name so let's do command set player name and then do steam friends dot get persona name and set it to string. We also want to change this local game object name. So game object dot name. And we're going to make it equal local game player. And, and this is super important that you set it to this exactly because earlier in a script, we set it to the same name. So you can set this to whatever you want actually, but make sure you have the same in the other script. Then we want to reference our lobby controller dot instance dot find game local player. Then we also want to reference lobby controller dot instance and update our lobby name. In the onStart client, we will reference our manager. Make sure you're referencing the capital one. And we're going to add a new game player, dot add, and then this. And we will also reference our lobby controller, dot instance, and we will update lobby name. And we will also, once again, reference lobby controller, instance, dot update player list, since we've just been added to the game. On stop client, we want to remove ourselves. So let's do manager, dot game players, dot remove and then this. And finally, we want to reference the lobby controller instance dot update player list. Since we've already removed ourselves, we want to update it. The last two functions we're going to do is the command. So in the command, I will reference this and then player name update, which is the function right below. And we'll set it to this player name and then player name. The reason I'm writing this is because we'll have multiple instances of this object in the scene. And if we don't do that, we can have errors later on. And finally, we want to update our name. So this is super simple. We are going to check if we are server. So if is server and then another check if is client. So if we are the host, we want to just do this player name equals new value. And if we are the client, we want to send our name to everybody. So we'll do lobby controller dot instance dot update player list sorry guys there's one more thing i forgot in the function under player list item in get player we actually need to assign the icon so let's do player icon dot texture and make sure it equals get steam image as texture instead of which we will pass the image id okay and that is finished the script is also finished let's go back into the editor okay so the final stage is just setting everything up in unity so first of all let's go to our network manager Let's set all of this up. So I'm going to just lock this so we can access it really easily. First of all, I'm going to make sure that our offline scene is our main menu and our online scene is our lobby. Then I'm going to set the player prefab on under player object to empty. For the game player prefab, I will drag the game player prefab and then we'll also make a registered spawnable prefab of the game player prefab. And we also want to take on auto create player. Inside of the player list item, we want to drag in our text and icon. We then want to save the scene and go into our lobby screen go into lobby controller and we need to set all of this up. So first of all, the lobby name, we can just drag that in from here. 
The content will be inside of the scroll view, so open up the scroll view, the viewport, and then the content. The player list item prefab will just be in prefabs, which is our player list prefab. And the local player object and local player controller, we will leave empty as we will assign that once we're actually in game. We also want to go into file build settings and add these scenes, so let's add the main menu. Let's also open up the lobby and add that as well. Now if we go into the main menu and hit play, you should be able to press host game. And as you can see, our icon loads and so does our name. Right now the icon is upside down and this is a quick easy fix. So we can go into player list item and go to our player icon, rotate it 180 on the Z. And also we want to set the scale on the X to minus one because Steam has the icons inverted. If we save that and start again, we should be able to press host game and our icon loads. We have our name and we also have the name of the lobby. Now let's test it if other people can join. So I've got this application launched on here and also on my laptop. So if I press host game on my laptop, as you can see a lobby gets hosted. I can then also open up Steam Friends, click on myself and join game. And then inside of Unity, I would have joined it. You can see that the screens look exactly the same. I load their name and their profile picture, which they don't, currently don't have, and they also load mine. So that is it for this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to watch part three, make sure to subscribe so you know when it comes out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.